Uh, hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Made With Love. My name is Heather, and as you can see, today I am in my kitchen. Uh, up in Canada this weekend is our Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is on um, Monday, October 11th. So I am doing all my prep work early in the morning to get ready for our Thanksgiving dinner. So my menu for uh, Thanksgiving dinner, making a turkey, ham, gravy, stuffing, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, beets, purple yam, butternut squash, um, some roasted potatoes, uh, deviled egg, salad, buns. I was going to be doing a cheese pickle cracker platter as well as a cookie platter and my punch. And for desserts I am making a pumpkin cheesecake, a pistachio pudding trifle, and I had a couple other, had one other one, I kind of changed my mind, and so I don't have the newest one on my list, I'm just trying to remember what it was, because I switched a few things out, because I couldn't get one of the ingredients in time for one of the desserts I wanted to make. So when I get to making desserts, I'll remember, uh, so I'm making them, I'll let you know what the third dessert was that I'd be making. So just to give me a few minutes to just turn the camera around, position me, and my first thing I'm going to be working on is making the angel food cake for my pistachio trifle. So just give me a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so because I'm making this um, pudding uh, trifle, I'm making an angel food cake but I'm not going to put it in the angel food cake pan. I'm just going to cook it in a regular pan. Just move the camera down just a little so you can see what I'm doing. So I said I'm just going to use regular angel food cake mix for this. And I want to make my cake mix um, taste more uh, uh, homemade. So I'm not making it with water. I'm just going to make it with uh, milk. So the recipe for this cake mix just says I need one and a third cup of water. So I'm just going to use one and a third cup of milk. minutes so it's all nicely mixed and I've got my oven already on and preheated so for this one uh, the temperature is 350 for uh, where you're using a shiny metal pan or 325 if you're doing a dark or non-stick pan. I'm using a glass pan, so I've got the oven, I've got it set to 350 at the moment, just to preheat it a little faster. But when I put it in, I will be turning it down to the 325 because I am using a glass pan. I'm just gonna scrape the side down. And on this kind of cake mix, again, it also says not to grease the pans. all mixed in now. I'm just going to grab one pan. I'm not sure how many pans this will take. One or two. Again, because I'm just going to be making the cake and I'm going to be cutting it up and layering cake and pudding and Cool Whip. So I'm not using, I'm not baking this like a regular angel food cake in my angel food cake pan. Oops, that off there. Pour it into this pan. And the angel food cake does rise when it's baking, so just don't want it to have it too full in this pan. 
think it will be okay. And then it takes, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 minutes. And I'll have to reread the box for how many minutes to put it in. So I'm just going to put the cake in the oven and then I'll be back with the next thing that I will be making. Okay, now I'm going to be making my um, pumpkin cheesecake. So I'm going to need a couple of the pre-made graham wafer crust. You can make your own graham wafer crust. They're very easy to make. I just like to have these on hand. I've got about four right now. They're just really easy, kind of makes your fast desserts make even faster. And I'll be using cream cheese. So the ones I've got today are the lactose free. I tried these uh, a year ago when, had the, when I first time I saw the lactose free ones and nobody noticed any difference except some people could eat the cheesecake with no problem. And then the other ingredient is the whipping cream. This is the 35%. Sometimes 35% is hard for me to find. So they have to do the 33 or if you can use the 28%. But I find the peaks and stuff, it doesn't hold uh, the peaks as well at the 28. So I try to get the 35 when possible. And then for this, because I'm making a pumpkin cheesecake, you need your pumpkin puree. So I've got a can of the pumpkin puree. I also have the can of just the pumpkin pie filling. I don't remember what the difference is between the pie filling versus the puree. I just know that I need the puree one because I'm doing no bake. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. If this one can only be used baked only, I'm not sure. But I always have both kinds on hand because I never know if I'm going to be doing just a regular pumpkin pie where I'm baking or if I'm going to do the cream cheese no bake version. And I've got both the labels have been open. I'm trying to hold them but there is recipes inside the labels for different pies in each too which are always really nice to make. So I like that the fact that the pie fillings have a easy pie recipe right inside. If you don't know how to make a pie you just got to open it and it's got the recipe. First things first, I'm just going to open the puree. I'm going to have to look up what the difference between the two types of pumpkin is. I've never actually thought about if there being a difference. I just usually just, whatever the recipe says, is what I use. Just got to get this out of my way. I'm just going to grab a spoon. Forgot to grab one. Just taking the label off so I can keep the pie recipe for another day. I am using my KitchenAid stand mixer for this one today. So first thing I'm going to do actually, I think the first thing I should do is actually work on getting the cream cheese softened first. So I'm using two bricks of cream cheese because the pie pumpkin puree that I'm using is the 796 milliliter can, so it's the largest can. So I find two pouches of the, the two bricks of the cream cheese works the best. If I can get this open. to mix this on low. other side of my kitchen because I didn't grab the spices so I'm just going to let this sit for a few minutes to soften and then when it's softened and ready for the next step I'll be right back. Okay so I've got this almost, I've got the 
cream cheese mix and it's uh, softened enough that I think I'm going to add in the puree. Let me get this out. Get this out of there. I'm going to pour in the pumpkin puree. Now my spices that I'll be using are um, allspice, cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, and uh, this one's not labeled yet. Have to get some spices. Oh, cardamom. That's the five spices that I'll be using. I had to go yesterday to the bulk barn and get spices because I'm low on a lot of my spices for baking. So I'm just going to be putting in probably about a, we'll start with half a teaspoon of each spice and see how it uh, tastes and if I need to increase it, I will, but right now I'm just going to continue to let this all mix in. It's going to take a few more minutes. So when this is done mixing together, the cream cheese and the puree filling, I'll be back adding the spices. Now I've got the cream cheese and the pumpkin puree mixed together well. I'm going to add my spices. I've got my cinnamon here. I'm going to be adding two teaspoons of cinnamon. And one teaspoon of cloves, one teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of cardamom, and one teaspoon of allspice. This all mix in and then I'll be ready to pour it into the pie shells. Okay, we've got this all mixed in. Stop with the mixer here. I can just pour this filling between the two pie shells. One more last bit stir to make sure it's all stirred in all the way down to the bottom.
I'm just gonna set these aside and I'm just gonna clean up this bowl and spoons and I'll be back to make the whipped cream topping. Okay, so now I've got the pies in the shelves. So now I'm gonna work on the whipped cream topping, which I'm making with the 35% whipping cream. Just going to pour it into my mixture here. And I'm just going to let this mix. It will take a few minutes, so when it's done, I will be right back. Okay, I've got the whipping cream almost finished. I just turned it down for a second so you can hear what I'm doing. I did put in the two boxes into the stand mixer because I'm working on two desserts. The one was the pumpkin cheesecakes and the second one is the pistachio trifle. So I made the angel food cake and I'm making the whipped cream. Now I've got to make the pistachio pudding. So I've got my two boxes of pistachio jello pudding mix and four cups of milk. start working on the dessert really fast. Making it trifles, so it's going to be layered with the pistachio pudding, the angel food cake, and the Cool Whip. So I'm just going to turn this back on because I can tell it still needs another minute of mixing. I've got my four cups of milk. Mix this all together. everything in and I have the angel food here. It's going to be just a layer of cake. I'm just going to start you know, pulling the cake apart. That's why I didn't bother making it in a nice angel food cake bag because I just want uh, chunks. So put this done. And this is done now. Turn this off and give it a quick stir. There, yeah, the whipped cream is done. Take this off. I wonder how to take this off. some of this whipped cream to the top of the pies. Got to grab another spoon. Cake. 
next to them. I'm going to see if the black pad will spoon it. Yeah. Get some more pretty here. And make even a layer of that. Oh, it is just layering pudding, cake, and whipped cream. I'm going to finish off with the pudding on top because I need the rest of that whipped cream for the, for the uh, cheesecake. For the very top of this, I have um, in my pantry, I found some pistachio pieces and some toffee score bites that were left over from the thing I was baking. I think that was when I made the fudge last Christmas, I believe. all nice and even on top. You know what? I am going to put, I think I, I think I will put a little bit more of the whipped cream on here. I think I might just use all the whipped cream on here instead. 
I do have some other Cool Whip in the freezer and the aerosol Cool Whip in the fridge, so it's a little better. <laughs> on this top part. score bites. my pistachio pudding trifle. I guess I'll get the other whipped cream and I'll be back to do the whipped cream on the pumpkin cheesecakes. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so I got the pistachio trifle done. Now I've got this coconut whipped topping. That's what I'm going to use on top of the pumpkin cheesecakes here. Lid open. I'm really not very good at doing these, especially when it's this cold. So I'm just gonna a little oh there. Sometimes it's first little spritz comes out a little runny. gaps and this one I'm going to try going that one even from the center up this one I'm going to go from the outside inward and see if it if it's easier am I out of it already I am <laughs> okay I don't use these cans too often. I, you don't get a lot of whipping cream, but I've got one pie completely done. One pie, I've just got the outer edge done. So I'm gonna put the pie and the pudding in the fridge. And I'm gonna start peeling and chopping potatoes, carrots, and beets. And when I'm ready for cooking the actual main supper, I will be back. Okay, welcome back. It's been a few hours of chopping and slicing and starting to cook the 
veggies. So in my roasting pan in my oven, I've got beets, carrots, and potatoes. I had put them on a cookie sheet, a single layer, to kind of partially cook. And then I put on some olive oil to help them cook a little bit longer. And then I transferred the fix that in a second I transferred them into my roasting pan and then over here by the stove we've got a butternut squash sweet potato purple yam and regular potatoes so these are going to be our mashed sides and in the pot here on the stove we're boiling eggs to make devil's eggs so so we'll get be right back when we're ready for the to show you the next step Okay, so I've got my turkey cooking in the oven. I don't have it covered with tin foil yet. I just have to find my foil. And then over here in my slow cooker, I've got the ham. It's looking really good. It's been in here probably close to three hours now. And over here, I've got the potatoes are mashed. The purple yams, butternut squash, and sweet potatoes are also mashed. And... Right here, I've got out of the oven, I've got the roasted veggies, so that's the beets, carrots, and potatoes. And right here, my daughter is doing the deviled eggs. So I think we're getting pretty close to being almost done. What I've left to make now is gravy, stuffing, and cranberry sauce. So I'm going to get all the stuff I need to make for that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I'm going to make my gravy now. I'm just using the little packs of instant gravy mix. I don't have much time today to make the bigger gravy from scratch. I do love these gravy mixes. So I can have gravy, you know, anytime. It just takes just a few minutes to make the gravy. And I'm using two that are the mushroom and two that are the pork. For each one of these, I need a cup of water. So I'll measure out my four cups of water in a minute. I'm just opening four packs. So it says you just have to, um, in a saucepan, combine water gravy mix, ready to boil over medium heat, stirring constantly, and then you simmer for one minute. Can't be any easier to make gravy. My four cup measuring cup into my water. Four cups. And I've got my whisk. And I'm just going to stir this in. I'm just going to mix this in and then I'm going to turn it on. This is over medium. Just have to keep stirring it until it starts to boil. Now, I already pre boiled my water just so it saves a few minutes. Keep twisting. Just going to bring this back up to a boil. After this, I'll be making the cranberry sauce and the stuffing. Oh, it's 
take a little longer, so I'm just going to pause and I'll come back when it's actually boiled. Okay, that just took a couple, oh, minute. Gravy's hot, so it's bubbling and it's nice. So I would just turn it down and just let it simmer for a minute. Just let that sit for about a minute and then the gravy will be done. So well, I'm just going to smooth that off here. I'm just going to grab my other pan here because I got to do my cranberry sauce. I've got my cranberries. Oh, I got to get the scissors. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my scissors. I'm just going to cut the egg open now. So for the cranberry sauce, I need about three cups of cranberries. I'm just going to measure this out. Uh, it says it's about four cups. That's okay. More about the fatter ones than I normally use. I need one cup of sugar. Sugar here. One cup of sugar. And one cup of water. Just gonna see if I have any water left in my kettle. Do. Okay. Then I turn this on. And I just have to let this come to a boil. And then when they start to pop, then I have to cover it and simmer. Grab the lid here. Now what we're doing, I'm just gonna quickly, here's my gravy. I'm just gonna slide the gravy in. It is done. So that's very easy, fast gravy in the boat five eight minutes you've got a nice amount of gravy i'm just going to set this aside i'm just going to grab a spoon i'm just going to start to stir the cranberries and the sugar because you want to kind of get the sugar to dissolve in the water here just wait for that to up so I'm just gonna pause until the cranberries start to boil okay so the cranberries are boiled I moved them to a pot that's just a size smaller just kind of help get them to boil a little faster I'm just gonna wait till they start to pop it should be doing right away I'm just gonna turn it just a little so I don't get splashed too much wait for them to pop I don't hear any popping yet. Okay. Well, I'm just going to turn, I'm just going to move into the one burner the side and I'm just going to turn them on and off the wrong burner so I'm just going to bring this one here because I need to start on my uh, um, stuffing. stuffing so I'm just going to grab the stuff for the stuffing and I'll be right back okay now when I make my stuffing I usually start with a liter of um, vegetable stock or beef stock or something I don't have any today so I have to use my little oxo cubes so I've got in my pot I've got four cups of water and I'm going to get that to start to boil and while it's starting to boil I'm going to open up uh, four oxo cubes I think it's one per cup I think that's what it is Of my cranberry sauce. Forgot to turn it down to simmer. Oh, I hear some starting to pop now. So now they're starting to pop. So I'll do two beef and oh, I've got a chicken one. I'm just 
guess I'll do one chicken and I guess I'll just do two beef. I'll just use three oxo cubes today. I'm just gonna wait for the water to boil and for them to start to dissolve. So it's a minute to let that happen. I'm just gonna wait for this to and then right here I've got some parsley and green onions I've already chopped. So I'm just gonna sprinkle those in now so they can kind of just start to kind of cook a little bit. And for my gravy, or gravy, for my stuffing, I am actually using a couple bags of just the seasoned croutons. So I'm just gonna wait for this to boil and for the oxo cubes to dissolve and then I'll be adding the crouton. So I'll be back when I'm ready to do that. Okay, so this is now boiled and the oxo cubes have dissolved. So I'm just going to add two bags of the seasoned croutons. down for a few minutes. I'm just going to turn it down to simmer and all the, water, the liquid is now just absorbed by the croutons. So just going to turn that down and I'm just going to put the lid on this and just give it a couple minutes and then my stuffing will actually be done. sauce they've popped and they've done what they're supposed to they don't quite look like they have like gel anymore like they usually do so I'm just gonna turn the heat up just a little bit to get them back to a little bit of a simmer so I think I may have turned them down too far so I'm just gonna turn them up just a little bit to let some more of that liquid kind of burn off and I will be back when the stuffing and the cranberry sauce are both done Okay, so when my stuffing is done, the liquid's all evaporated, it looks like that. I'm just going to pour it into the bowl and just let it kind of cool down and finish kind of cooking so it's off the burner. And then here is the cranberry sauce. It is done as well. So again, I'm just going to take it off the heat. I'm going to pour it into a bowl and let it cool down and as it cools down, it will thicken a little more. So I'll be back when I'm ready to make my next item. Okay, so we took, <clears throat> I'm doing this. So we took a 30 flat of eggs, hard boiled, like boiled them. Not the soft boiled, but like hard boiled the egg. Took all the guts out, the yolks out. Put them in a bowl. This is the lovely bowl. Took a uh, three fourths cup of mayonnaise, put them into the bowl. Well, we started with half a cup and then put a bit more because it needed a bit more. And then we took some dill and a bit of pepper, put it in there. And now we have put, I have put it in a bag. And I'm going to cut the bag and use it like fill, fill them. I don't have English. Typing. Typing. Yeah, that's a word. So I'm just gonna cut it off. It's just a regular Ziploc bag, sandwich bag, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just gonna fill it. And we just fill it, and we have these bowls. These lovely, lovely bowls. Or plates. Ladders. So this is technically 60, gonna make 60 deviled eggs, but we got this one which holds 30-ish um, eggs. Yeah, so we'll just be kind of using this to like hold some of them. Yeah, we're just gonna fill them all, put them in here. That's kind of, yeah. I'll just show it kind of like. Mm. 
filler. Like, just to let the bowl be yeah. go a bit over. Yeah. And yeah, a deviled egg. Put it on your platter. And I'm just gonna do this to all of them, and then we'll get back to what to do after that. They don't have to be perfect, and you can see here, like, they were the actual white of the egg was just completely split in half, and you just fill it with the yolks, and it mends itself together. It's natural glue. Like this one's completely falling apart. What do you do? You fill it with glue. Yeah, no. It's pretty simple. You just fill the egg with other parts of the egg. Yeah. So we got paprika now. These are all the lovely, lovely deviled eggs. All the yolks have been inserted into the whites. I don't know how to English. Either way, now we're just gonna take the paprika and sprinkle it on somewhat evenly, as best as possible. Trying not to get too heavy, but also not too light on them. Hmm, just... You can go back and like touch up certain ones. And boom bada bing. Boom, that was a lot. That's how you make deviled eggs. Boil eggs, remove the yolks. Yolks plus mayo plus dill and pepper. Then put the mash of that into the whites and you get this. Delicious. Okay, so there's my slow cooker ham. It is done in just a couple minutes. I'm just going to be lifting it up. And right here is my turkey, and it is done as well. And we've got the doubled eggs and the salad. And we've got our cheese and pickle platter. Just have to find the little bowl and put butter in it. It'll be in the center. And on the dining room table, I've got a cherry cheesecake, and I've got extra cherry pie filling for people lifted up. They can um, get themselves some more cherry. I've got this cake here. It's a raspberry, cho raspberry chocolate cake. And this one over here is, of course, the one I made this morning. It's the pumpkin cheesecake with the coconut whipped cream and then over here on the table I've got a nice pl cookie platter and I got my cracker platter and then I've got the pistachio uh, pudding trifle that I had also made this morning and then over here we've got our punch which is about uh, two liters of cranberry juice and one liter of ginger ale and in my oven, I've got everything in here on warm. So I've got my mashed potatoes, mashed yams, uh, cranberry sauce, stuffing, gravy, uh, my roasted vegetables, which were the carrots, beets, and potatoes. And I've got the purple yam and the butternut squash. And I think that's everything I made today. I just want to say thank you and just a quick recap of what I had made for my Thanksgiving dinner. I had done my turkey in the oven. I did my ham in the slow cooker. I did a really fast instant gravy. I made my stuffing, which again was just a really fast cheater way with using croutons. I made my cranberry sauce. I did mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, purple yam, and butternut squash. And then I did some root veggies cooked together in the oven, and I did carrots, beets, and potatoes. Uh, my daughter had made deviled eggs. We did a salad really fast. I just bought a pre-made salad. Uh, I also did a cheese pickle cracker platter, and I did a cookie platter, and I made punch. And the way I make my punch is just uh, two liters of ginger ale and two liters of a cranberry juice. Uh, for the desserts, I made my pumpkin cheesecake, I made a pistachio pudding trifle, 
and I also did a cherry cheesecake which was really easy I had just bought a store made regular cheesecake and open a can of cherry pie filling on top so I think that was everything I had made for my Thanksgiving supper and I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been subscribing to my channel and watching my videos and I will see you all in my next video bye